Great. Happy Earth Day, everyone. This is wonderful to have these beautiful young women here with us. Uh, we we're going to celebrate Earth Day. We're gonna we're actually going to take jump right into it. Introduce have the these women introduce themselves. Um, I never do anyone enough justice. Uh, I think that everyone's story is so important to come from them. But um, we have um, Akasha Looking Horse. Uh, we we introduce her as uh, an ambassador with Grandmother's Voice, and it's it really we call her that our youth ambassador because we think it's so important that uh, that we you know elevate the voices of our youth and our young people. But she has wonderful relationships with a lot of our our uh, re relatives that are involved with Grandmother's Voice, and the work that she does for the water is just unreal. Um, and so welcome. Welcome. And then we also have uh, Larissa, who is just a pioneer in the STEM and women, uh, you know, bringing just really keeping the, the women engaged. And, I, and to me, I, I did a little bit of research, Larissa, your mom. Uh, is that your mom that's on your like, come on, that's so amazing. So you come from a line of, of pioneers as well, two young women who are just ramping everything up and making space all over our nation for young women um, in the STEM world. And, and it, this is really exciting. So what we're going to do is because um, Makasha has a really uh, a big day today. She's got a lot of stuff going on. So we're going to start with Makasha. And then what we can do is when you jump off Makasha, um, you know, we can talk until you have to leave. But then Larissa and I can get really deep into uh, what uh, Canadian Association of for girls and science is all about and how everything came to be. But uh, please, we'll talk, introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. My name is Kasha Looking Horse. I'm Sego, Seguego, Makashingats, Gekahaga, Niwako Honjona, Wakatuhuni, Six Nations, Nido Wageno. Um, like I said, my name is Makasha and I'm from Six Nations. I'm Mohawk uh, Wolf Clan and Lakota. Um, and yeah, I come from a long line of leaders on my father's side. Um, his name's Chief Orville Looking Horse and um, long line of matriarchs on my mother's side. And her name's Dr. Delmarn Hill. Um, so I've had a unique background growing up and of having best of both worlds, of having um, lots of traditional knowledge and um, guidance from my father and my mother, um, but also being exposed to the academic world. Um, all growing up and traveling all over the place um, since she's a cult cultural anthropologist. Um, so I've learned a lot and um, at a young age, I guess I started learning about um, traditional knowledge and how everything works uh, out on the outside and how we're supposed to give thanks to everything. Um, and and our, what our ceremony is about and giving thanks, which is basically giving thanks to everything and singing songs for um, like the winds and the thunders and the sap and everything <clears throat> that the creator gives us really and that, that's outside. Um, singing and dancing for those things and being thankful. Um, and I'm a McMaster Indigenous Studies student. Um, I'm in my fourth year. And um, I'm also a youth coordinator for Oneganos Let's Talk Water. Oh no, Oneganos Water is Life. And um, that's a project that has been looking at Six Nations Water for the last three or four years. Um, and then I'm also the host for the Oneganos um, Water is Life project called Oneganos Let's Talk Water. And we just, finished a few weeks ago season three so now we're going to be starting season um four next month sometime or no actually actually in june we're going to be starting season four so look out for that on our Nignos, um waters life facebook page yeah, but that's basically it um i think i can ask more questions if there's anything else i think i probably missed a little bit but <laughs> That's okay. We'll learn more about what you're doing with um, the girls in science. Uh, but Larissa, if you could come on and introduce yourself, that'd be great. And then we can really get down to what's happening, especially today on Earth Day. Uh -huh. 
So um, I don't know. I don't know if I can unmute the mic or if that's on your end. But thank you for unmuting me there. Um, so I am Larissa, and I'm founder and president of CAGIS, which is short for the Canadian Association for Girls in Science. Um, it's an organization that supports interest in science, technology, trades, engineering, and mathematics, short or STEM for short, um, among youth across the country, particularly girls and um, youth who are gender non-conforming to spirit. Um, and so we've been in operation for 29 years now. So I started it when I was a kid um, and now I'm obviously an adult. So we've been around for, uh, for quite a while. Um, and so we have a few different things that we do. Um, we have chapters that run in-person events where we get to go to the workplaces of experts in various areas of STEM. Um, but when the pandemic started, we also adapted and started a new virtual program that um, is called Kegas Virtual. And so every Saturday we have two sessions, one for ages seven to 12 and another session for ages 11 to 16 run by experts in all of these different areas. We're really looking forward to having Makasha and her mom um, running an upcoming session, um, sharing their indigenous knowledge with us um, about the three sisters and water and all of these interconnected elements. Um, so we're really honored to have them joining us in a few weeks um, so that we can start uh, learning from them. Excellent. And so maybe this is what, thank you for sharing that, Larissa. Um, I was just trying to, to to do the posting. Did you get yours posted, Larissa, to invite your oh, your crew? I will do so, that. Yeah, thank do that right now. Me. This is really yeah. important, you know, being able to have these conversations. And this was really, or get, like the way that we came together was very ad hoc or however you want to talk about. We just planned yesterday. Um, you know, we, we at Grandmother's Voice, it really just organically started because I started to hear my grandmother's voice, right? When I was doing all of this work. And so when uh, grandmother Renee Thomas Hill introduced me to Makasha, she was like, you need, we need to really talk with Makasha. And I knew already knew about you because of your brother and just my own journey. And so connecting the two um, Makasha inviting you or, or introducing you to Larissa and the group, um, at uh, girl, uh, Girls in Science is imperative right now. And it's imperative from the indigenous lens, but more so about the water, the young women. So talk about that and, and really at this point, if you can just share, because I know that you're on a tight schedule, talk about what maybe you might deliver um, on May 8th, I believe that's the day. Is that the day that you're visiting? Okay, um, the online program, which I just signed my daughter up for, um, uh, for actually a couple of weeks anyway. Um, but yes, yeah, so if you can just jump in, talk about that day and maybe a little bit about what you're going to deliver. And then please, before you go, talk about your initiatives today because they're really wonderful. Yeah, no problem. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm super happy to be talking on May 8th. It's going to be um, with Girls in Science. And I'm going to be mainly focusing on um, our three sisters, which I have a few examples here today. Um, there's all, I don't think a lot of people know that there's all types of different kinds of beans and there's all types of different corns and there's all types of different squash, like that, like a lot. <laughs> and like, there's like the seed keepers that have like thousands of different beans um, that, and some, like some beans come from like all the way, like are passed down through family or they just like har had them for a long time. Um, and, and yeah, they like a thousand, like years, like years and years. And some are just super old. Um, and they just try to keep them in the family and keep them, um, I guess like purebred or like pure, um, cause they can easily like be cross contaminated. Um, I'm not exactly sure like which kind this one is, but this one's, a uh, like what my, um, my partner uses. He, and it kind of looks like that. I don't know if you can see it. But there's different beans that look, that are different. Like some are purple, some are, um, yeah, different shades of purple, different shades of reds, different, um, like some are look like kidney beans. There's like thousands and these are like traditional beans. I don't know if you can see them, but that we have like all different kinds of these different kinds of beans. 
And um, we also have all different kinds of squash, but I don't have any an example of squash right now. But I do have an example of the corn. So this is blue corn. And there's all different kinds of corn. There's um, like colors that are red or colors that are blue, um, colors that are purple. And it's really, it's really unique. And I don't think a lot of people know that this even exists. And it's really interesting. And and you just, the way that we harvest it is, um, well, you just harvest it like normal and then you take out the, we wait till they dry and then you take out the beans and then you basically just store them. They just dry out themselves like over time or you can let them dry in the field. Mm -hmm. um, and then with the corn, you pick it and then you husk it and you can braid it. I have a few examples here but stuff's on top of them right now <laughs> um <clears throat> but you're able to braid the corn into very long um braids and you can hang them up in the dry space and you can let them dry and then once they're dry they'll come out like this and it'll be like this is all hard i don't know if you can hear that but like it's rock like solid and then so you like just either you can do it by hand by like taking off the um oops but basically like that way you can like take it off and then it will look like this um and then i think i, I don't exactly know the next process but then you can make it into um you can grind it down and it make it into mush into um i i would I have a few examples here, but you make it down into like a small grain, like almost like a flower. And then you can make that into um, mush or whatever else. I think there might be a process where you have to like boil. I don't know if that's just for lead corn. I'm not ex like I don't have extensive knowledge on exactly the process of how to make um, mush. But um, basically like it goes from that and you have a process and then it come, becomes mush and mush is like <clears throat> our sacred foods that we can that we usually use in ceremonies <clears throat> you can cook mush like just for a regular meal and yeah there's all different kinds of mush and you can put um you can put syrup in it or berries and it tastes really good so um, I don't have a, I don't have the pumpkin or squash or, and like, and they all work together, whether it is like any kind of squash, because there's all kinds of different squash. There's like, um, yeah, all kinds of different squashes. But yeah, usually um, it doesn't really matter what kind you plant. As long as it's a it's a part of the bean family, part of the corn, and part of the squash family, you can plant them together. And the reason, like, why you're supposed to plant them together, it really comes from like all the way from our creation story of how, um, like, Sky Woman, she that was what when she was falling, um, she was grabbing onto all different kinds of plants, and that was one of the well, one of the, oh, like, a lot of plants that she grabbed um, was corn, beans, and squash, along with, like, strawberries. And so um, that's where it comes from. And when she falls, she still has that, but she asks, um, she asks for the help. When she gets on the turtle's back, she asks for help from all of these different animals. And muskrat was the one that was able to grab the dirt from all the way down at the bottom of the ocean and bring it back up and um i don't know if it was the ocean or what kind of fresh water it was <clears throat> but she was able to plant that and she sang seed songs and she danced escanye on it to spread around the dirt on the turtle's back and so she was able to have um so that vastly grew um and grew on the turtle's back and spread out and it was able to save her and her child or her yeah and her child and so she was able to 
survive and off of those plants, off of corn beans and squash and strawberries and whatever else she was able to grab. But those were some of the main ones and they're called the three sisters. Um, because they work well together, they have, um, they have the different properties of working together. Like I think the squash protects the corn and the beans and the corn helps the beans grow because the beans like to grow up things. Um, and then, so that, that acts as like, they're all helping each other in different ways. And um, the squash creates this, um, creates shade with its huge um, petals, its huge leaves. So they all really work together. And then the scientists also backed it up that they found other properties that really help each other. Um, like, I can't exactly remember the different, what they exactly called them, but I know that science has backed it up. And science has backed up a lot of indigenous knowledge. Mm -hmm. And I think it's easy. Um, well, it's easy to forget that, like, I guess that a lot of Western knowledge is indigenous knowledge, like from the medicines. Um, I think penicillin is indigenous and around like it's a huge number, like a huge percentage of, of Western medicine was derived from indigenous medicine um and a lot of people don't know that and the same with our government system like that's where that's they modeled their government system off of the Haudenosaunee and that's how they got the idea for, for democracy um and there's just like a whole bunch of other things that are that Canadian claims I get Canada claims as theirs or Canadian society claims as theirs but is actually indigenous um, even from like sports, like lacrosse and hockey and basketball, like all of those things were from indigenous peoples. Um, and there's this, I think there's just a lot of things that we can think of and find that are actually indigenous that, that we wouldn't think or that you're not taught that is, that is indigenous. But I think that's I mean, the whole learning of everything, right? And mm -hmm. that's what Larissa is learning, learning um, with her program. And I think that that's what's going to really going to be wonderful is being able to to show the young girls, you know, it, not in school, because because I guess that's a part of your whole program, Larissa, is that it's not in school. It's more of a, a girls community. And I just I feel like when you were talking, um, Makasha, like I could I can just see you being that mentor and and reaching out to these girls with the knowledge that you have. And it's going to it will make sense. They're just probably going to say I understand it because to me, science, like STEM is magic, really, in, in every way, even though some people say, oh, math or whatever that is. But for someone like myself, I look at that. I look at science as magic, right? And and I really see that that what you'll be providing that day and hopefully onward in this program is that Indigenous knowledge that you so, um, you know, you're, you've been known since you were in your grandmother, <laughs> pretty much, right? Um, so tell us, just to be mindful, where it's 1120, and I know you have to go. Tell us what you're doing today, because I'd love to, to make sure that we keep you on schedule so that you can do that the important work that you're carrying out today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no problem. So today is Earth Day, and for Oneganos Let's Talk, no, Oneganos Water is Life program, our project. We are doing a few things today, which is um, like me, myself, I have to go pick up um, 30 saplings and I'm going to be donating them or on behalf of the Oneganos, we are going to be donating them to Land Back and they are able to do whatever they want, whether they want to take that home or take them home and plant them at their houses or plant them at Land Back. Um, and I don't think a lot of people know, like, Lambag is actually a, um, I guess, like, an unoccupied lands that are in dispute. And the Canadian government basically just is avoiding um, the treaties, um, avoiding land claims and avoiding the treaties that are, um, that are made with Canada from our, um, from our nation. And like you don't make treaties with 
unless it's another nation and they are just keep, they are just avoiding it. And I think we're on, t and I think the land back um, <clears throat> has been going on for like, I don't know, I like almost a year, a year, I think. Um, and they've been uh, like just staying there. And because Caledonia, our next door neighbors are trying to de expand and develop on our land. And this is just like a flashback of what has happened in the past. And it keeps on happening like every generation they're just trying to take more and take more and take more which is not like land that's not theirs basically and um yeah so we're going to be trying to donate um our plants to them you like either probably i'll drop it off later today or tomorrow or this weekend and then also we have a petition that is with the wellington water watchers and that is um, basically trying to get the community to um, be aware of what kind of bills there are that we can help protect our water and how we can how we can as a community um, push like our governments to um, be on be on like the committees of who is governing of governance over our waters because there's a lot of a lot of governing bodies that just exclude indigenous people and we are not at those tables whatsoever so like that's what we're trying to push is have signatures to um, push our government to be at those um, specific bodies governing bodies which we are currently not at and we should be we should be the ones who are leading leading those kind of committees and those governing bodies Oh, definitely. And I think too, I think it's, it's being able to connect organizations and we're still in that education space right now. Uh, but definitely, mm -hmm. I think that this is why it's so important for our indigenous organizations to support each other and not, not be, you know, oh, well, maybe we're not the right match or maybe, oh, we're not doing the right things. No, indigenous uh, led organizations need to support indigenous led organizations to get us all to the table. So I really, I, I appreciate your words, Makash, and to know that our, our indigenous youth, like yourself, your brother, you know, the, my kids that, you know, they're really stepping up and, and understanding that this is the, our responsibility as, a, as just as being born <laughs> we, this is all of our responsibility to understand that uh, the lands that we live on, and who, who, you know, that they don't really belong to anyone really. But, mm -hmm. um, but thank you. Was there anything else you'd like to share? I, it's almost 1130. Yeah. So I want to make, be mindful that you have to get on the road and do yeah, your we're work. Doing other things too. But um, I noticed no, the other one is that we're also going to be putting out um, more or like promoting our more of um, like that community is able to sign up like uh, it's for water testing. Sorry, they able so the community is able to sign up for water testing, and <clears throat> we're trying to get more community members to sign up for water testing because we don't have enough data right now to prove like where their contaminants are coming from. And right now, um, a lot of people don't know that Six Nations is in a water crisis, and only ten percent of our community is hooked up to the water treatment plant, and the rest have to which we have tested and is clean, but the rest have to fend uh, for themselves, basically, um, whether that's getting water from like somebody that they know and the water truck and putting in their water cistern or putting it in their well. Um, but it's basically like their responsibility to take care of that. And it's a big cost also. It's like, I don't know, maybe $180 a week sometimes, depending on how big your households are. And some people can't afford it because we don't have the proper in infrastructure um, because we that's all of on our cost. Like we have to put, when you build a house, for example, you have to put all of the infrastructure in before. And sometimes that can be like $40,000 before you even build, before you even begin to build your house. So like piping is a huge, um, another huge cost. Um, and what we have found through the water project is there's five different heavy metals in our community's water um, tap water and it's it really is like it, it is a crisis and there's 
um, there's like 400 times the allowed amount of um, the, the different chemicals in for in our creeks and our water, water systems. Um, and so there's definitely a correlation. It's just unacceptable. Yeah, it's, there's, it is, it is un unacceptable that this is happening. And like our neighbors, like Caledonia, like um, Hamilton, like Toronto, all don't have this kind of problem at all. And um, yeah, so we have huge, like a lot of heavy metals and it's, it's, it is frightening. We have arsenic um, in our waters and we have, um, I forget what, uh, what the other ones are called. But and I yeah. know I did talk to your mom mentioned to me last week, the frustration because they're just, they found out that there's even more than what they originally thought. So this mm -hmm. is, this is something as geez, even as you talk about it, my, I, a part of my body just like woke up in a, mm -hmm. in a not happy way. You know, it's, it's unacceptable. And the, the, the work that you're doing, even just to, to bring this to, to light and to surface is really important. Um, so, I mean, asking in this moment, if we could, you know, before you, you head out that it's so important for your community to engage in that. It's hard at the time because, you know, we're in a pandemic, but you know, if I, if I think if, if our elders were here in this conversation, they would say, now is the perfect time, right? Mm -hmm. Now is the time, right? When you're in those spaces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're trying to, so that's why we need people to sign up for household for the water testing so that we can collect more data uh, and then eventually have data, enough, enough data to take it to core and sue Canada basically is the end mm -hmm. plan. And like have this data and without data, like, I mean, we really need the data to, um, to push forward any kind of case or, and to claim that this is happening because right now it, nobody knows about it and, and it, people should know about it and there is consequences to pay. Um, and that we need to, that's what, that's why data is so, is so important so that we can go move forward mm -hmm. and to uh, who is, fault is it and why is this happening and make our claims as a community mm -hmm. well I think you know and I and thank you Larissa sir, for being so gracious for you know sitting and waiting because this is also a passion piece for you too right like you must just be sitting there saying I this is what I've worked for as well for so long you know, and to see someone, you know, young like Makasha that grew, has grown into this as well. You and I spoke yesterday just about, well, just about our whole story and how we met and how you got connected. But just being able to hear her speak and and I thought I'd give you a minute um, before Makasha jumps off to, to, you know, whatever, say hello or say goodbye or talk about what she spoke about. Well, Makasha, I just want to say that we're really looking forward to having you. It's really inspiring hearing you speak. And I've been reading also about um, all of the work you've been doing throughout your life. And so I think that that's going to be really inspiring uh, to, to our girls. Um, and um, so we're, we're really looking forward to having you on with us. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I am so happy to talk to you, any, any kind of youth because I'll, they're the next generation. And it's so important to take care of them and give them the knowledge that they need to move forward and be amazing and do amazing things in their life. And it's just we need to guide them and um, give them healthy, healthy thoughts and healthy knowledge and healthy emotions. And um, they'll grow into amazing people. And that's all we can ask for the next generation. You're on mute. Yes, I am on mute. I am on mute. Sorry, I was just saying thank you so much, Nyawa. Uh, I, I, I'm not forcing you out of the room. I just know that how where you have to go to go pick everything up. So if if you're ready to go off, you just you just jump off and exit. Um, uh, but uh, it's always a pleasure to talk with you. You inspire. You inspire, and I'm so excited, and I can't wait to see uh, what you do with the the. Canadian girls for science or in science. I always get that mixed up, but just mm -hmm. girls in science excites me. Mm -hmm. So Larissa, talk to us about, about what you're doing and, you know, more about, um, oh, 
Oh, she, okay. I thought I did that for a second. I was like, oh, there she <laughs> went. It's like that Ellen show, you know, where they just drop them down when people leave the room and I don't expect it. Um, but you know what? Let's just start, start from the beginning right now. If, because in, in, I think maybe you should tell the story because I always tell the story and, and people that hang out with me always say, oh my gosh, when you hang out with Jody, anything can happen. But if you don't mind, just tell the story how we met cr quickly and then let's get into more about your, I don't know. We don't have to get into anything. Like we can just talk. <laughs> so um, it was a few years ago that where we both attended a press conference. Um, we were invited um, by um, to a press conference where there was an announcement um, by um, Miriam Monsef about uh, landmark investment in women and women's organizations. And so we just so happened to be sitting side by side and we started chatting. And um, and then you said, hey, we should work together. And it's like, yeah. Um, so uh, that's how it all started. Yeah. And it's funny because I remember and I and I kind of get teased about this because, I mean, for years, my husband's like, hey, really, you have to just talk to everybody. And I'm like, my grandmother told me to. And he's like, OK, sure. I'm sure she did. Right. You know, so he never really, you know, understood that whole spiritual side for me. But that's really where grandmother's voice came from was, you know, when I I committed to or surrendered to doing this work. Um, it was like every time I was out in public or out somewhere or even even online or whatever, it's just you need to connect with this person for the reasons I never really knew. But so here I was actually with my my friend and I was working for an organization part time. She took me down to meet you or not meet you, but probably um, and you know, to find out what was going to happen. And there I was, you know, she's having a conversation with me. and I'm just like, hey, just a second. And I remember fumbling for my cards, you know, and I was like, oh, yeah, okay. Remember, because I had it so quick, you were like, oh, oh, you have your cards so quickly kind of thing, right? Yeah. And, um, but yes, and there was, and it was, and we've been talking ever since. And we didn't, I didn't really know why. I just knew what your program was when you told me I was intrigued and I was intrigued with you, you know, and just knowing that what you created made sense immediately to me. So um, you tell us a little bit more about how broad your, your program is, because I was pretty amazed that it's from, you know, uh, side to or side to side from <laughs> coast to coast. Yes. Yeah, so um, we have chapters from coast to coast, like you mentioned, um, but our virtual program um, gives us so much more breadth because we don't have chapters in every single location. Maybe we will at some point, but with our virtual program, it just, it allows us to reach anywhere um, a person has an internet connection. And so that we have a lot of girls now who are participants who are in more rural regions, just places where um, they wouldn't have had access to this kind of programming from us um, before that. Um, so every week, yeah, we've got, uh, we've got both volunteers and we have um, youth participating from everywhere. And that's what I thought was awesome to be able to connect with Makasha and um, Dawn, her mom, uh, Martin Hill. They have an amazing, well, the, the program that they do alone with the water, um, but just also knowing that the depth in the background, it just made sense to connect an Indigenous program, you know, led by women to uh, a STEM program led by women for girls. And so, you know, we, there's a lot that we can um, talk about in those programs I went on there last night and just what you offer is so fun. You know, I was trying to tell my daughter, I'm like, Oh, come on, just sign up. And this was like four months ago, I think. And she was like, no, I don't need more work. And then yesterday I went on and I pulled it up and right away she was like, Oh, that looks fun. Okay. And it really is interactive. And I don't know if you want to just share because we do have some time um, and we can talk about, uh, you know, just the different uh, elements that you bring to the program. So Jody, you really got it. We'd really try to make it fun. This is not school. There are no tests. There are no essays. So we're trying to just inspire and interest um, and also expose girls to all of these different fields that they may not have known existed. Um, so even within our virtual sessions, we always make sure that they're really hands on. I don't want to spend an hour listening to someone talking at me on Zoom. I mean, I do for work all the time. So. <laughs> 
that's not, I mean, that's not nothing to say about meetings or anything like that. But in my spare time, I think that it's more fun to do hands-on things. And I think that you find that as well. So um, every one of our sessions is very hands-on. We send out a list of materials in advance. We try to make them as easy as possible to find. So things that you could find around your house or on occasion, it might be something where you need to go to the grocery store, but they're things that are very accessible. And so um, last week we had a mechanic on and she was talking about how she got into the trades. All of the girls made their own um, small vehicles that are powered with elastic bands. So they're kind of like these wind up vehicles that you can actually make at home with just simple things around your house. Um, we had a food engineer with us um, in February um, on Valentine's Day. And so we learned all about the process um, of making chocolate from her and how that happens within factories. And then we all got to make our own chocolatey treats. Um, there's really just a wide breadth of the types of things that we explore. And we try, they're always led by different role models so that the girls get to know our actual experts. Um, my training is in vision science, so it wouldn't I wouldn't be as convincing talking about food engineering because I don't know much about it. I'm there to learn just like everyone else. Um, so we try to make sure that we're making those direct connections so that um, girls get to know the actual people who work in these fields. Total mentoring like that. I love it. I'm so excited. I think it's great. I've um, I, I actually mentioned this talk to our science um, curriculum at our school boards. Like, are you connected with any school boards? Do they know about this program? So we don't have formal partnerships with any school boards. We do have an um, expert on demand sessions. So um, our PIG is virtual sessions that they're different every single Saturday, but some of our sessions um, can be ordered by a school board or a birthday party or a not-for-profit group to be run again. Um, and so we have had some school boards, um, we've run some sessions, like some of our expert on demand sessions for school boards, um, but we don't have formal partnerships with any. Okay, so anyone watching that works for a school board, let's step this up, because I think it's so important, and, and really that's pretty much my role, I think, in the world, <laughs> is, to, is to connect people and get it, you know, get it done, because these programs are awesome to be able to, to know that you know your kid can be busy your daughter can be busy on a saturday by herself for an hour you know discovering you know and and you know give yourself a little bit of time but i completely see myself sitting in there and doing this because i was just fascinated by the chocolate making my own little elastic rubber you know my rubber band car that fascinates me and i and you know and i think what happens in life you know, maybe it's maybe this is just my life. I'm speaking from my own experience is we're going, going, going. We're just constantly going. And and I think that I've had this opportunity through COVID, which most I think other people have as well to reflect and say, how did I get here? Right. Like and I, we actually we had this conversation yesterday. Didn't we something similar yeah. where it was like you wake up one day and then it's either, oh, my gosh, this is my purpose and how do I amplify what I'm doing, right? Which I think a lot of people may have done through COVID as being frontline workers, you know, and knowing that they really were valued by the people because if we didn't have them, it would be horrible, right? It would be a million times worse. Um, or people that I have said, whoa, what I was doing was is so wrong for me and I'm just doing what I'm doing to do it, to pay bills, to survive. So I really look at this as an amazing opportunity for parents to engage with kids, right? Get a little creative while you're being educated, yeah. right? And and engagement. I don't know. This is fabulous. I love it. I hope everybody's excited as me because I think it's a really amazing, like I, I think I'm reacting the same way I did when I met you. And Jody, you know, we do have a lot of parents who are joining. So it's it's very common to see the the participant and then you can see that there's a parent off screen that's, you know, they're kind of letting the child do the activity, but um, supervising and I think they're just kind of having fun along with them. With our in-person events, parents are also welcome to join. So it's very common for the parents to come and um, stay along the edges, but kind of... Uh, learn along with their their um their children 
definitely. And I think it's important. And uh, I think one thing with this, well, this platform we'll say is that we're quite, um, you know, we organic, we just talk about what comes forward. And, um, and I think that right, you know, you and I are just starting our conversations about how can we take this to the next level? How can we make it a mentoring a program, or even like a grandmothering in of, you know, indigenous um, girls as we begin to grow. So I know that we have um, some pretty amazing influencers that watch our show. It gets circulated, it stays on. So this is my opportunity to just like pitch it out there to anyone that's watching that can really see the synergy and feel feel the passion in bringing and merging indigenous, you know, ways of knowing to a girls in science you know, STEM program, that's like, that's what Larissa and I see. And that's what we started to talk about was, okay, so now that we've, you know, we've begun our relationship, she, you know, Larissa and her program and her volunteers and her staff are really engaged. I'm, I'm just going to say this to you, sorry, because I'm, I'm in this, in this flow. Uh, we had talked about like, it's really important to be in, in relationship with Indigenous community and not just doing the one and done, bringing one person in. And because you've worked so hard at creating this amazing program, you know, everything that Indigenous people do is about weaving and braiding and bringing thing, bringing it together so that we can do it in a good way and that it's sustainable. So that's, you know, that's kind of the conversation that we, uh, we just had yesterday before coming on here, because again, this was just ad hoc. We were like, hey, what's going on? I don't know. I was like, hey, let's do something for Earth Day, which I can't believe I didn't have something planned. And maybe it's because we've been so busy. But to get back on that on that pitch <laughs> is this is really important. And I so I would love to um, to bring, you know, invite everyone that's watching to visit the link that I shared for um, Canadian Association for Girls in Science. And I shared the join link. Uh, because then you can just kind of travel from there. But it was reasonably priced and it is reasonably priced. I'm totally pitching for you too right now. Um, I just, I love this idea and I love the program, but the vision really is, is to bring um, the voices of the indigenous, the indigenous girls forward and really making that space. So if, you know, anybody that's watching, you know, feels the same way that Larissa and I do, message me or message her and let's talk about how we can make this happen quickly and in the meantime um and if and you know if there's anyone out there that would really love to sign their daughters up and and may not be able to afford it right now we know that at times are tough please know that you can still connect with larissa and i and and we'll make sure that that happens because every um, young young girl should be able to to do this, and I believe that's something you offer in your program anyway. Larissa, you want to talk about that? Yeah, we, we do some membership fees for families um, experiencing financial hardships. So there is uh, on the join page. There's a little um, some information at the bottom. You can send us an email, and we can waive membership fees um, for an individual session or for a membership. Mm. Yeah. Oh, thank you. We just got a message here. Actually, I'll share. I'll share this message, and this is exactly what we're talking about. Um, and you know what? Please message us. And um, I mean, we're well. I would say we're all struggling with making relationships or having you know friendships right now. But um, yeah, my daughter's. I catch her upstairs on on you know her computer talking with friends, and I, I walk up there, and they have their. The pictures off and they're just doing their own thing and they're not even talking to each other but it's that's the new that's the new norm right they're just they're here with me mom you know and, and i can talk to them when i feel like it and i talk to them when i don't or i don't talk to them you know so um but you know what we would love to support that i think it's so important right now that we offer these opportunities so um yeah let's let's get that together there's a lot of hellos here from our friends that um that are you know i have popped on to spend some time with us and uh, as well, you can go back through and it'll be played over and we'll get people that will comment, Larissa, and you can jump in there and, and share some of your links with some, some you know, maybe activities that you had and some pictures uh, because it is streamed on our YouTube page and our Facebook and then we're, we're sharing it abroad as well. So I would like to tell me a little bit about your mom because we have a few more minutes. We don't have to stay for the whole time, but totally intrigued. When I read that blurb about your mom, I was like, 
whoa, this woman is amazing. Can you tell me about her? Yeah. Um, so she has been one of my inspirations from the start um, and a strong mentor. Um, and well, I'm, I have to say I'm really lucky within my family unit that my mom and also my late father were both very supportive. My dad was an engineer um, and a pilot and my mom is a research scientist. So she's a professor at Western. Um, she's the director of the Population Community Health Unit and she does research on adolescent risk-taking behavior, including street racing, um, things related to traffic safety, um, drinking, driving. Um, she was one of the founders of the RIDE program. Um, so, and that's something that's, you know, we all know about now, um, some really important work. And she's been involved with Kegis since the start because when I started it, I was nine. Um, and at that point, um, I mean, it was very good to have, and even still, to have someone to be able to ask, how I wanna do this, how do I do, how do I do X? How do I do Y? So she wouldn't do the things for me, which sometimes annoyed me as a kid, because um, I remember I had a long list of names that I had to type up so that we could print out labels and send them letters. And I was I was a kid. I was bad at typing and it took me forever. I was just I felt like I was dying in front of this computer, typing this stuff up with like single fingers, looking for every single letter. And I was like, can you just help me? And she said, no, you have to do it yourself if this is your work, then it's your work. Um, but I could ask her, like, how do I do this? She would give me information about um, the different processes to take. And she also particularly helped with the financial side because um, as a kid, I couldn't be assigning authority, obviously, on our bank accounts. And so she did all of the financial tracking because that that would have been a little bit over my head at that point. Um, so she's been, she was a strong, a, a person who was very strongly involved. She still is. Um, there was a point where she started to have to pitch in a little bit more because I know that it, uh, initially she said it was my work, but then it grew and it grew so much that I couldn't, it was just too much for me to handle along with school. And so we started kind of dividing responsibilities so that she was overseeing certain elements. I was overseeing certain elements. But now, I mean, we've got hundreds of volunteers across the country. We have other staff members. So we've come a long way. I love it. I love it. We, you're going to have to connect me with her after this, because as I'm sitting here, I, I understand now why I'm so intrigued by her. Um, there's a lot of stuff that, that we can do together as well. Um, I love it. I just love everything about this. You just made me think, um, you know, on, on Earth Day, I always remember um, little things in my life that connected me to Mother Earth and my life and my mother. And so, um, you know, usually from an Indigenous point, you know, we like we introduce ourselves and we tell the depth of our, our families. And I think that that is obviously one of the most um, wonderf wonderful gifts that our culture, you know, has kind of created for us and, and everything. And, and you're learning all of this. And I know that you'll be you're going to be so grateful. Just the conversations that we had yesterday about why Indigenous um, ways are so imperative, I think, right now is because of the value system and just the things that they do that remind us that we are here to serve others. And, you know, when we have these gifts to be able to offer them is so important. So in this moment, I'm, I just want to give um, my gratitude and love to Mother Earth because I know that I work for her now. I understand. I understand my purpose. Um, and I love my mom is is the best. She's the biggest lover I've ever met in my life. And actually, I think my whole family that's what we call her she's just the lover she's taught us all how to just love love the best that we can love life love the person we're with and be present and and you know constant in the conversation Oh. Had a little glitch there. There we go. Yes. We're Maybe back. my family is, I hope they're at school, but could be playing video games. <laughs> Sucks up all that. 
<laughs> but as we were saying, I, I just the the love of the women in our life, and for you know those whose whose moms may you know may have been going through their challenges. I know um, just from the the women that that I know that have had their own journeys when mothers always love their children and we're just doing the everyone's just trying doing the best that they can and so these organizations that like yours that bring young women together to support each other are so important in this time and so i'm uh just was really grateful to meet you on international women's day three years ago yeah. and uh love that that we're moving forward in relationship and I don't know, is there anything that you'd like to add? Well, I just want to say that I'm so glad that we uh, that we sat next to each other, Jody, and that you were so quick on whipping out your card and and starting up that conversation. i'm I'm really um, looking forward to our continued partnership and and building the interconnectedness and in the relationship um, as we move forward. Thank you. That's so lovely. And just because I I can, I'm going to share your po your poster, um, just to kind of show everyone what's going on on that May eighth. But there's if you go to your website um, that I've listed here, the uh, Canadian Association for Girls in Science, you can. And it's just like the initials. But anyway, you will find everything that they do. It's actually it was pretty a, a very nice easy to navigate um screens so or, or not screen sorry but um program website let's go here we go i'm really excited to see this program happen can you see that i can see it yeah all right It was really wonderful to have you here. I can just see Makasha going to do her pickup and you know, getting to deliver all of the lovely things that she's delivering today. It's gonna to be a really wonderful time when you get together and I will be there. Excellent. Well, Watch. thank you so much for, for having me today, Jody, and particularly on uh, on Earth Day. Um, I'm, I'm pleased to have this conversation with you. Awesome, thank you so much. I'll. I'll uh, end the broadcast and we'll hang out in the back room for a minute. Sounds good. Thanks.